In this video, uh, which is beginning our little series on nomenclature or the naming of compounds, let's look at some basic facts about compounds. So one of the things you need to do when you look at a formula is you need to ask yourself, am I looking at a compound or am I looking at an element? And basically, if you're looking at an element, it only has one type of atom in it. So for example, in this formula, you have Cu written by itself. So that tells you you just have copper atoms uh, bonded together. And you can look in the periodic table and see that it is a metal. Whereas this formula over here, O2, uh, it is also an element. Um, it's actually a molecule as well. We'll get to that in another video. But it is also an element because it only has oxygen. The little two means that there are two oxygen atoms bonded together. But there's only one type of element in here. There's only oxygen, so it's classified as an element. All these other formulas over the other, uh, over on the left here are clearly compounds because they have different types of elements bonded together. If we look in this first formula, you have a sodium bonded with a chlorine. These are two different types of atoms joined together, so it's a compound. Now, once you've worked out that something is a compound, you want to ask yourself, am I looking at an ionic or a covalent compound? If it's ionic, remember, it is a metal bonded with a non-metal. And the, they actually aren't atoms now. They become ions. They are charged particles. Hence the reason we call it ionic. So if you look at your periodic table, you can work out whether something is ionic uh, by looking whether there is a metal. In this case, sodium is a metal. Or, and that the other element, chlorine, is a non-metal. If we come over and look at this formula here, you can see that there are indeed two different elements as a compound. Carbon is a non-metal, and so is oxygen. So when you have non-metals bonded together in a compound, that compound is a covalent compound. So here is our periodic table. How are you going to tell that? Well, you've got to look at that boundary line between the metals and the non-metals. Remember, hydrogen is often written over here, but we, in this periodic table that's up here, we treat hydrogen as a non-metal. And so here are all our common non-metals uh, that we find in compounds. And most of the elements, of course, are actually metals. So if we look at these formulas down here, how would you classify these? Well, hydrogen, non-metal, oxygen, non-metal, so therefore that's covalent. Any other covalent compounds? Okay, carbon, non-metal, I should really erase this so we can just see that. Okay, here's carbon, here's oxygen, right, that is also covalent. Uh, here's another one example, carbon, carbon again, covalent. Let's move this, look at this formula down here. Nitrogen, where's nitrogen? Oh, here's nitrogen, bonded with hydrogen. So both non-metal, so that is covalent. Let's look at the other formulas here. We have sodium. It is a metal bonded with chlorine, non-metal. So we're going to call this an ionic compound. Here's iron. Where do we find iron on the periodic table? Here it is here. It's a metal, a transition metal. It is bonded with oxygen again, non-metal. So this is definitely ionic. Same here. Here's copper. Copper's there. Metal. Ah, this is interesting. Carbon and oxygen, both of them non-metals. So this is ionic. And lastly, Potassium, group one metal, bonded with oxygen. Oxygen, again, a common non-metal, so that is also ionic. If you do recognize that the compound is ionic, you then need to ask yourself, can I work out the charge? And we'll talk about why this is important in our next video on type one. But very quickly, I want to remind you uh, that you can work out the charge of many of the metals in compounds. 
Let's take, for example, this one here, calcium. Calcium is sitting here. It's in group two. Everyone in group two here will form two plus cations. Here's sodium. It's sitting in group one. They will form one plus a one plus charge on its ion. Um, any others that we can work out? Oh yeah, here's aluminum sitting here, group three, it'll be three plus. Now how about the other formulas that are all ionic? Well let's look at them. Here's Fe, which is iron, it's a transition metal, so no we can't work out its charge. Same goes for copper, sitting there in the transition metals, can't work its charge out. So most elements, most metals that are transition metals, this bunch in here, you cannot work their charge out from the periodic table. There are two exceptions. Uh, they are silver, Ag, and here it is written down here. It will always be one plus, and the other exception is zinc, which will always be two plus. So that's the basics on compounds. So you need to ask yourself, let's sort of quickly go over it. Is it an element? Is it a compound? Once you work out it's a compound, can you tell me whether it's a covalent compound or an ionic compound? And then once you know it's an ionic compound, um, can you work out the charge of the metal from the periodic table?